Hi, Miss Ella Diaries friends. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms and grandmas and aunts. Today we will be discussing uh, parts of a plant and plant life cycles, and then that'll lead us into a Mother's Day craft that you can do at home. So let's first review uh, plants and the parts of the plants, the plant life cycle. Remember that plants are living organisms. Think of the three attributes, the three things that make a plant a living organism. Think it in your brain. They need water. The water helps them grow. And they need to reproduce or make more of themselves. Um, plants need sunlight and water to grow. And then they also need lots of space to spread out while they're growing so they aren't so squished. The life cycle of a plant starts as a seed. And what do you do with that little seed? You plant it. The life cycle of a plant starts with a seed and you plant it in the ground. The plant needs water and sunlight. So it starts to begin to grow into a tiny green sprout. You'll see the tiny green leaves poking out of the ground. Some plants grow and they'll produce flowers. And some flowering plants, they even produce fruits or berries that you can pick off of the plant and you can eat them. Some plants even produce vegetables and they are grown underground normally. The difference between fruit plants and vegetable plants is that fruits have the seeds inside or sometimes outside of the plant. And vegetable plants nor normally grow uh, either underground or as uh, roots, stems, or leaves. Um, so now we're going to get into our Mother's Day craft with our plants and discuss our plant parts. So here's an example of what you, your um, craft will look like. And we're going to use this to review our plant parts before we begin. So, in the center you have the seed or the seeds. And remember, that is what helps the plant reproduce. It helps it make more plants. And so you'll plant that part. Right here is the flower and the flower petals. And that's the pretty part that everyone likes. Even the bugs like it. And that's how come the bugs will go and they'll pollinate and they'll carry the the pollen and the seeds to other plants and uh, help other plants grow. So then you have the leaves. I drew my little leaves on here. And those are there to help them soak up the air and the sunlight for, for the plant to, to make food. Soaking up something is like when you spill something and use a sponge to clean it up then all that liquid gets soaked inside the sponge. And so a stem is like the sponge of a plant and it soaks it all in, soaks in the, the sunlight and the air. Then you have the stem. It holds the plant up, like how we have a spine that holds our bodies up. You can feel it on your back, those bumps. That holds your body up. So the stem holds the plant up so it doesn't flop over. The stem also acts like a straw and it carries water from the roots underground and in throughout the leaves to help it with the sunlight and air and making food for the plant. And so the stem is like a straw, like how you suck up your drink from the straw and it goes into your mouth. So that's like how the stem is too. So the stem not only helps hold the plant up, it also helps bring the water in throughout the plant. So underground, plants have roots that soak up the water. And so the roots soak up the water, it goes into the stem and it takes that water into the leaves and helps the plant continue to grow. So let me gather the materials and we'll get started on our Mother's Day plant craft. So the materials you will need for this plant project are one sheet of paper, it can be whatever color you want. Uh, I've just chosen a white paper. You will need a straw. 
preferably a green one because this will act as your stem and typically stems are a green color. You will need cupcake liners like what you cook cupcakes or muffins in, preferably different sizes or you can always trim a regular size cupcake holder down. <laughs> you will need liquid glue. If you have an adult help, then you're welcome to do uh, hot glue, but uh, I would like to use liquid glue so I don't have to worry about the safety of using hot glue. So tape, if you're not using hot glue, tape. Buttons, my favorite material in a craft box. Scissors. And markers to write your message with. <laughs> so first, you'll take your piece of paper and you'll fold it in half, hamburger style. So you'll line up the corners of the paper. What shape is our paper? Can you think of that? Our paper shape is a rectangle. Smooth that out. And so you should have the fold right here so you can open it like a book. And this will be the front of your card. Now on the example card, I wrote, I spread out the words Happy Mother's Day. And so you could either write it all right here, write it all down here, or you can spread it out like I did. I'm going to go ahead and write, write out my message so that way I don't have to be squishing my picture when I'm writing it out after it's all glued down. So let me grab my marker. I'm going to use the color purple. So just like in my example, I'm going to write happy right here. Don't write it too big because you do want room to uh, put your picture. So happy. H -A, A P P and then another P, -P and then a y Y. Happy. And then down here, Mother's Day. Mmm. M. Ah. O. Th is T H. It's a digraph. Er is E R. S. S. Mother's Day. D. D. A. Y. Y. Again, you can write it after, but when I did my example, I actually did write it after, and it was kind of hard trying to get my hand over the picture that was already there. Uh, I want to yell it out because I'm so excited. So what kind of punctuation would I put at the end of day? So I want to say, Happy Mother's Day! An exclamation. So then I'm going to get started on my plants. So first I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to cut that straw into two different pieces. Now I want my flowers to be two different lengths. So I want one to be one, a taller flower and a shorter flower. So I'm going to cut my straw uneven so it's not directly in the middle. And I'm going to put my longer flower here so it doesn't touch the word happy. And then my shorter flower here. So these are, what do you think these will be? These will be our stems. So I'm going to, go, going to safely hold the blades of my scissors and put them away. All right. So I'm going to now take my cupcake liners and you can choose whichever color you want I'm going to use a blue one and a pink one because those are very pretty colors and then I'm going to take my little one and put that in the middle like that 
Do you see how it looks like a flower? So I haven't glued anything on yet. I'm just kind of setting it up so I know how to space it out and what it would look like. And then I'm going to get my buttons. You can use whatever color buttons, but normally because of the pollen on the flowers, the, the middle is yellow where the seeds are. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use uh, yellow buttons for the middles of my flowers. So I'll put this one in the small one and then this one in the big one. And now you're ready to glue everything down. So first I'm going to stick these stems down. So I'm going to use some tape because I don't want to use hot glue and also hot glue would really just make this card very heavy. So I'm going to use tape. You don't really need that big of a piece. Maybe a big enough piece to put like three fingers in. And I'm going to put a piece down at the bottom of this long stem. And then one more at the top so it doesn't move around. So again, about two or three fingers that fit on the tape. And then I have another piece for the short stem. Don't put it too far off to the edge because you will be connecting your flowers and you don't want your flowers off of the edge. All right, so now we're going to assemble or put together our flowers. So let me take these off and take them apart, put the buttons down, put the flower centers down. And you can also use just one cupcake holder too. I like using the different sizes because it makes the flower pop out at you. So you're going to put one little dot on the bottom of your big cupcake holder. And what I tell my students is dot, dot, not a lot. So you don't need a lot of glue because this will spread out and help stick it. And you'll attach it right above. So attach means put together. You'll put it together right above the, your stem. Get my small cupcake liner. And put a dot dot not a lot stick it in the middle of my big cupcake liner or my cupcake holder and then put my button in the center in the middle um i'm gonna put it right here on the cupcake liner because i don't want the glue to come through the holes okay and then my other cupcake holder or my cupcake liner take the big one dot dot not a lot Stick it right there above my long stem. So if you're looking at the flowers, this one's shorter and this one is longer when you compare the sizes. And then you'll take your small one on the bottom, dot, dot, not a lot. And then your button, your seed pollen. I'm going to put the glue right here in the middle of the cupcake holder because again, I don't want the glue to go through the holes in my hand, into my hand. Okay, so now everything's stuck down. I'm going to close my glue, don't want it to dry out. And then you can get your markers and add your details to your picture. So I'm going to add grass at the bottom because my flowers are growing out from the ground. And grass grows out from the ground. Okay. Gotta be super careful. Close my marker so it doesn't dry out. I'm going to add a little sun up here in the sky. So I'm gonna carefully pull some petals back without taking it off of my card. Draw my little sun in the sky. And what else is in the sky that I can add? 
clouds. I'm going to draw clouds in the sky. So there's my cloud and I'm going to draw another cloud. And because my flowers have a pollen center, I'm going to try to draw a bumblebee because the bumblebees help pollinate flowers and they get in that pollen. So I'm going to draw his head and his little antennas. And I'm going to alternate, take turns, making a pattern of his stripes because bumblebees are black and yellow. So I used my black. Now, here's a yellow stripe and a black stripe and a yellow stripe. And I'm going to put that stinger on the back of the bee because that's the part that everybody's afraid of. As long as you don't bother bees, they won't bother you. And what helps the bee fly is wings. So add that detail. I want this to look very nice because this is going to my mom for Mother's Day. And a lot of times when you see pictures of bumblebees, bumblebees, then you'll see like the little dots like they just flew around. So I'm gonna add that. Like he's flying around the card. And like he came from the flower. And so there's all the pretty details. Also, what are we missing from our flowers? We have the flower, we have the seed part, we have the stem. What's missing on the stems? The leaves. We're missing those leaves. And those leaves, remember, they help soak up the sunlight and the air so they can help the plants make food. And there's our details. So then you can open it up very carefully and write your message to your mom on the inside. Don't forget to write your message because they don't want just a blank card. You can either make it just a card or you can put it on a whole sheet of paper and give it to her like it's just a picture. Either way, I like to do cards because it's something to look at that's nice on the outside and then when you open it up then there's a secret special message that tells your mom how important she is and all the nice things she does for you. Okay friends, thank you for joining me today and I hope you all have a good weekend and a happy, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Bye.